Good morning. It's a joy to welcome you all as we have gathered for worship on the fourth Sunday of Pentecost. It's an exciting day because not only have we gathered for worship, but there's a very special celebration today that did not make it into the bulletin. There are flowers on the organ, and they're in honor of the 68th wedding anniversary of Leroy and Grace McMurtry. And for the rest of you who don't know who that is, that's Faith Zom's parents. And they're here with us today, and they're gathered with some loved ones who will help them celebrate 68 beautiful years. So let's... <laughs> We're very pleased that we can celebrate this with you. Thank you for, thank you for being with us today. It is a joy. And they're just beautiful people. I, I, they're just beautiful people, so it is a joy today. Um, today also is a, I, I ask for, I, I do something very out of the ordinary. I'm asking all of you today as we're in worship together, please hold Kathy Startsman in your prayers because Kathy is on her way to the emergency room not feeling well, and we know she's had the history with the strokes and things, so um, please be in prayer today as we're gathered for Kathy. Um, we love Kathy, she's a sweet person, and so... Um, it's very scary, and we don't when we don't know what's happening. So we pray for Kathy, and um, we'll keep you posted through um, email this week as to how Kathy's doing. Once we know more, I invite you to stand as you're able as we continue with our confession. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today comes to us from the 38th chapter of the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Or, what were its, or on what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far you shall come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stopped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together responsively from Psalm 107. The congregation's verses are in bold print. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God hath redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke. A stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves and the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards. All their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing hallelujah. The epistle lesson today comes to us from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in the sixth chapter. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way 
through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are all alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. For this, the fourth Sunday of Pentecost comes to us from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side, and leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Do I have any young friends who'd like to come up for a children's message today? Good try. (laughs) My mom told me to. I'm real, it's good listening. We should always do what mom tells us. Happy mama is like money in the bank. Well, today's not about Mama, though, is it? It's Father's Day, right? Yeah. Are you excited about Father's Day? Yeah. Well, good. Me too. But, you know, it's, it's an important holiday. But there's something that we do every week in church that has to do with fathers. Can you think of what that might be? It's something we say every night at bedtime. What do we say? The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. And how does that start? Our Father. Our Father. Oh, gosh. I couldn't pay you to say this stuff. You're doing so good. (laughs) Excellent job. Good job. So we have this special prayer that we share, right? That that the whole church shares. And we know God is our Father, right? We we, we pray our Father who art in heaven. And then we go to talk about his name being holy. And we ask him to watch over us and keep us from evil and all these important things. Because we are reminded every time we share in that prayer that our heavenly Father, God, loves us. He loves us so much, and he's always watching over us. And even though dads can sometimes make mistakes and sometimes don't get it right, our Heavenly Father does get it right. He loves us so much and so richly, and he always wants the best for us. And he's always watching over us, just like a good dad is always watching over his children. Our Heavenly Father watches over us. So it's really important for us to remember that even if we're having a bad day or maybe even a bad season and we're struggling to get along with dad or our earthly parents in general, it's really important for us to remember how much God loves us. And he is always wanting the best for us. Not just whatever we can manage to put together, but he really wants us to be the best. He gives us such incredible gifts and talents and abilities. And he wants us to use those to the fullest extent possible to make the world a better place. That's why he gave them to us. So it's important when we celebrate Father's Day to also remember that God is our Father. And so while 
um, we might have people over to our house later today to have a little celebration about Father's Day. It's important for us to remember what God has provided for us and how he watches over us. And we say thank you to him too, right? All right, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for Father's Day. Thank you for putting men in our lives who love us and watch over us. And thank you, God, for always watching over us. Help us to love you, to serve you, and to draw other people closer to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seat, bud. Holy God, as we meditate upon your word, may your spirit, the great wind, blow your breath, blow through this place and make us alive. Shake us from our slumber and help us to focus on Jesus. And we ask this in his precious name. Amen. I have a little bit of coffee here because I did have that ice cream. And as you know, ice cream coats your vocal cords. And that's a problem. So I'm trying to keep my voice clear for you. It's not that my sermon is so dry. I'm trying to keep myself awake with the caffeine. <laughs> lest you should worry about that. Now last week, we had a little sing-along. This week, I'm not asking you for a sing-along. But I did have another song stuck in my head all week long. And I think that this is a song that I first heard, well, a long time ago. I think I first heard it, um, one of my relatives had this on a religious recording by Tennessee Ernie Ford. But then I heard the Elvis version. And my world was changed forever. Because, you know, the king has such passion in his voice. So when he sang, When the storms of life are raging, Stand by me. I, I, I can't even do that justice. But it's just, it's so emotive. There's so much power in, in, in the expression of his bluesy singing. That's why Elvis became the king. And even when he was singing gospel music, it was apparent that he was the king. He could do it in a way that no one else could. And so when he's singing about the storms of life, you have in your head the very image of the great wind rocking the boat, of the earth trembling, of things being literally moved by the breath of God as it whips and moves. And we have that in our gospel lesson today. All around us, there are storms. There is so much unrest and unease in our world today. Some of you may recall, about two years ago, I, was, I made up a phrase and I was really trying to get it out into the world so that I, don't, I didn't really want credit for it, but I wanted people to talk about it. I, and I feel more and more today like maybe I'm even a prophet because the phrase I was trying to use was transformational upheaval. The world around us is changing and we can see the signs even a couple years ago. It's changing so rapidly, so quickly, and, and things are, even the old reference points seem to be in flux. And there's this transformational upheaval. And for many people, that causes a storm of a different kind. In the scripture today, the disciples and Jesus are in a boat. Now, what's fascinating is, like you, many of you here today, I have heard this story all my life. And yet somehow, in the listening to it, and even in the reading, I somehow missed the, a really important part of verse 36, it says, when he says, and leaving the crowd behind, they took with him, they took them with him in the boat, just as he was. And then it says this, other boats were with him. Now, I don't know why, probably because I always looked at the pictures in Sunday school, and that was just about Jesus with the storm and the disciples. And in those Sunday school pictures, there were never other boats. It was just Jesus and disciples and a boat. And yet, what does it say? Mark records for us, other boats were with him. I think that's really important. And it's so sad that I miss that. Because this gives us a clear image of the church. It's not just Jesus with his disciples, a select group that matter. All of them those other people in the other boats, all affected by the storm. All of them moved and tossed and frayed and, and thinking they were going to perish. But we're always focused on that one boat with disciples, 
And yet they were all afraid. And how about you and I, living in a world where we find ourselves afraid? When I was probably Buddy's age, about, about nine or ten, I remember asking one of my, my older, my great uncles, who was a farmer, because he knew, because I could get them talking about all these stories about the old people, my great grandparents and so forth, and the old days, because he, re, he started farming in the 20s when they were still using horses, and, and then he moved into mechanized farming and all this. So he had this wide berth of knowledge, and I said to him, Uncle Bill, how did you know what the weather was going to be? It seems to me, in, even as that age, I knew weather was important because you, you didn't cut hay if you thought it was going to rain or things like that. So how did you know back in the old days what the weather was going to be? And he said, well, you know, when I was a little boy, mom used to always teach us this saying, red sky at night, sailors delight, red sky at morning, sailors take warning. So if the sky is red at night, it's going to be a good day the next day, if you have a beautiful sunset. But if it's a red sky in the morning, there are storms coming your way, and don't cut your hay. And they had some other things, too, that I've taught my children about looking at the moon to see if there's a ring around the moon, especially in the winter, because then you'll know if you're going to get snow and all that sort of stuff. And, and it sometimes works, doesn't it? Yes, sir? Uh, well, when me and you were watching the history show back in the 20s, I think, there was, like, there was a And the air pressure, he, yeah, Buddy's telling us about a homemade barometer. We did watch that, yes. How they made a homemade barometer to check the air pressure to know if that was going up or down. That was really important, too. Um, but, you know, weather matters. Storms coming in, it, it matters. And not just to farmers, it matters to you. Some of you may be planning events for this afternoon for Father's Day, and I'll bet you're going to stay inside if you think there's going to be a storm coming your way. You're not going to plan a great big cookout and be outside in the open and just, oh, Lord, I hope it holds off. No, we won't do that. But these disciples, they got in this boat with Jesus. They went on a journey they thought would be peaceful, and it turned out all wrong. And they were scared. They literally thought they were going to die. And Jesus was right there with them in that boat. In your life and in mine, it's not just the weather that we worry about. Now, we do worry about that. Let's be honest. That's one of the most glorious things that happens on the news. When there's a really good storm coming through, whether it's a winter storm, if it's another kind of, it doesn't matter. If, if, the, if the people in the media think that they can whip you into a frenzy and have you clean out the shelves of every store, boy, that's a really good news day. Because you see, that's not even partisan. They don't have to worry about anything being partisan. If they can make everybody afraid that Armageddon or Snowmageddon is on its way, boy, they can upset everybody all at one time, and, and their ratings go through the roof. But there are other things besides weather that really worry us. There are other storms that overpower and overtake us. Illness is one of the ones I deal with on a regular basis with all sorts of folks. People who are sick. People who are afraid, literally, that they may die. And then there are other things, too. There are family disputes. There are all sorts of traumas and troubles that people go through and troubles at work. And that doesn't even step into the problems that we have in our nation itself. There are all sorts of winds that swirl around us and make us concerned and wonder, what will tomorrow bring? What will it be like? Storms come in so many different ways, and they each have the power to overwhelm us. And yet, we have the exact same gift that those disciples had. No, you're not sitting in the boat with Jesus. But Jesus is no less distant from you and I, wherever we find ourselves surrounded by storms about to be overwhelmed. Jesus is simply there with us waiting for us to call on us. And it's not that he will take the storm away from you, but he will bring you the peace and the calm that you need to weather that storm. As a kid, I watched a lot of old movies. One of my favorite storm flicks that's a classic is Key Largo, a good Humphrey Bogart movie. 
the storm's coming in, and they're there on the, in, that, in that little hotel down there on the island, and there's all these natives. And the man who owns the hotel normally invites them all in when there's a bad storm, but because the gangsters are there, they can't come in. And they have to stay out on the porch through the whole storm. And it must have been terrifying for them, if that was a real story, to have to do that. But I remember as a kid thinking to myself, oh my gosh, how horrible to face this terrible, terrible storm and have to be sheltering on someone's porch, afraid that your own house might be taken away in the wind, in the battering rain. And then I grew up, and I have watched as storms have battered people in so many ways. And so many of us are like the Osceola brothers and the other natives there who were, didn't think I remember that, did you, Faith? The Osceola brothers, those were the, those were the two natives that the police were looking for because they thought something, they had done something wrong. So, little, little, it's always important to know the good movies. Hollywood today does not hold a candle to a Humphrey Bogart movie. Ah, oh, let me tell you what, some good stuff there. But it's important to think about how storms grab a hold of us. And sometimes we're like those native people clinging to whatever we can find that might be the strongest thing that we can think of. When you and I are looking for that, when you and I are at that point, it's not what we can find physically to hold on to. That's the moment we have to look at the cross and hold on to Jesus. Because ultimately it is Jesus who will save us. And most importantly, it's Jesus who often saves us from ourselves, from our own fears and doubts and all the horrible things that are inside of us. We live in this time of transformational upheaval. And you can be like a dinosaur and be left in the wake. Or you can be a part of what goes on. And you can be a part of a new world. And you can have your say too. And you can talk about what's right. You can talk about what is true and beautiful and good. In the face of storms and adversities, we must hold on to the truth of who Jesus is. He is the one who saves us. In the face of every storm in life, we must hold on to his goodness and his mercy, his love, and his grace. Otherwise, we will not make it through. Our Lord gives up his life on the cross and has given it back to him on the third day, so that we who share in his baptism also share, not just in his death, but in his resurrection. And in his resurrection there is hope, because we see that in the face of death there is life, and there is beauty and goodness that comes from God himself, and that even when the storm itself may completely overtake us, there will still be Jesus, not asleep on the cushion, but there with outstretched arms to receive us and to take us to himself, to the place that he makes for those he loves, for those who have loved him. And we will find rest and safety and security. The world is really raging. The world outside this door needs you because you are rooted in this peace that comes from Jesus in the face of adversity. You are rooted in this hope that comes from Jesus in times of despair. And as we go outside this door, we see the deep need in the world around us for these extraordinary gifts that you have because you are the church. The church is not a building. The church is the body of believers inside and more importantly, outside of the building. Today is a sad day for my friends at a church near my home at St. Luke's Winters Lutheran Church. They're losing their pastor after about 21, 22 years. She's, she's taking a, a leave from call to take care of an ailing mother. And because her mother is beginning with dementia, she's moving her mother back to Nebraska to the familiar childhood surroundings. It's a big uproot for all of her family. And it's a big loss for that church. Pastor Ann has shepherded them through some difficult and heartbreaking times. And it's a very sad day for them. But we must also believe that God will send them someone else to watch over them, 
to pray for them, to give them the same kind of love and support that they have received. And most importantly, we need to know that they themselves, as the church, have been equipped for a time such as this, that they could be the church. They can hold it together, and they can continue to serve the community around them in the same loving and compassionate way that they have for, with her 22 years at the pulpit. It's important for you and I to remember that God must always be in charge, and we don't have to do this on our own. Now, I know there's a couple of guys here. You were raised like me, right? You're supposed to be tough. Just yesterday, I, I couldn't believe it. I saw on Facebook, it was yesterday the day before, somebody I went to high school with, he was on Facebook burying his soul and saying how, what a horrible day he had had, and that it almost brought him to tears. And without fail, three guys followed up with the phrase, man up, man up. Why are you on there bearing your soul and telling people all your sadness and brokenness? Man up. Because we're supposed to be tough. We're supposed to be strong. And we don't give in like that. Well, sometimes life is overwhelming. And even the, the toughest of, among us chokes back his tears from time to time and tries to still push forward. And we just can't help it. But we know that we have Jesus. We have Jesus who has shown us that sometimes also in our tears, we share the greatest gift with the world around us because we show that we are vulnerable, that we can hurt, and we also need his love. We also need Jesus. We can't do it on our own, but with Jesus, all things are possible. And the world outside this door needs you as the church to go outside this door and let them know when the storm clouds are gathering, when they look around in the morning and there's a red sky, they need to look to Jesus, who will lead them in the perfect way of compassion, of mercy, and of grace, to take on whatever troubles the world will throw at them, and to find peace as they make their way through. My prayer for all of you is that in each storm, you also will have his peace so that you may endure it and weather it and know that on the other side, God still has extraordinary things in store for you. Life is worth living and it must be lived to its fullest. Amen. Now, I didn't name the person who, who requested our special hymn of the day today, but I will tell you he's a father. I will tell you that he's among us, and I will tell you that he was really, I think he's really excited that we're singing something that was written after the Enlightenment. So, because um, sometimes we sing these sort of gloomy old things that just sort of make you wonder, is there more fog coming out of the organ? But today, we're going to sing something joyful, Amazing Love.
Let us join in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our gracious and most merciful Father in heaven, as we celebrate and give thanks for our earthly fathers today, we want to give glory to you, our magnificent heavenly Father. We bless you, Elohim, creator of heaven and earth, who is the God of might and strength. El Shaddai, you are the God of blessing, and we give you praise. Adonai, we worship you and thank you for being, for that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Blessed Jehovah Jireh, we thank you for being our provider. Your grace is sufficient for us. When we are in pain, whether body, mind, or spirit, you, Jehovah Rapha, are our healer who brings forgiveness and healing. Jehovah Shalom, you provide the peace that passes understanding when all around is turmoil. You are the good shepherd, and our confidence is in you, most blessed Jehovah Rohi. Our hearts are comforted, and we are strengthened by you, dear Jehovah Shema. For you have said you would never leave us or forsake us. Eternal Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, please accept our praise and worship. We love you, we honor you this day and always for being our Father in heaven, who loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, to save us. May we be a people who will daily serve you with thanksgiving and praise for being the Father whose loving kindness and faithfulness never fails. And now, Lord, we bring our prayers for Trinity Parish, all those who fellowship with us wherever they may be. May they sense your presence and be blessed. We lift up our pastor and his family and ask your blessings upon them, as well as all those in leadership and teaching roles in music, those who care for our church facilities, our church secretary and various committees who serve, those who handle our filming and live streaming ministry, the many volunteers and helpers that work at the church, and those who reach out to the sick and homebound. May the Holy Spirit anoint each one and bless their efforts. We lift up all those in military uniforms who protect and care for our country. Bless and protect them as they serve. Bless all the first responders, police, firefighters, EMTs, and other public servants who work for the good of our community. Protect them and keep them safe. Send your Holy Spirit to direct those who govern us to do what is right in your sight. Blessed Father, because you are the God who is able to do all things, we bring those to you who are on our hearts and personal prayer lists, either silently or out loud, who need your healing, comfort, and peace. May they know the assurance of your loving care. Father Jesus, be with the trace. Frank, oh, there. for Stephanie. Richard, for Joyce, for Georgia, for Bonnie, for Donnie, for Stephen, for David. Thank you, God. Praise you. We pray for those known and unknown to us who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. We ask you to open their spiritual eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness and release from their sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified and made holy by faith in Jesus, that they should repent and turn to God, doing deeds and living lives which are consistent with repentance. 
thank you for your saving grace. And in closing, dear Lord, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen, complete, perfect, and make us what we ought to be. And equip us with everything good that we may carry out your will while you yourself work in us and accomplish that which is pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to whom be the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Lord Jesus said to his disciples as he says to us, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. you. May offer to another a sign of God's peace. Stand over here while you're ready for communion liturgy. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and you nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us not a feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son. He reached out to heal the sick and the suffering. He preached good news to the poor, and on the cross, he opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. 
My friends, we pray as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to his supper. You may be seated. I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to take up the empty.
Will you all please stand? <laughs> May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that we who celebrate with constant devotion may also know the sure pledge of your redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are charged with a mission. By way of special, and you can be seated for just a second. I promise you this will not take too long. But I do have some important announcements to share. The first important announcement that I need to share concerns our church secretary. I ask your kind prayers and thoughts for Stephanie, who has been dealing with illness for over a year now, and because of COVID was unable to get all the proper medical diagnostics and testing that she needed. She will be consulting tomorrow with an oncologist to determine the best course of treatment, but she'll be receiving, she believes, chemo and radiation for um, a condition that she has been dealing with for quite some time. And they believe that this will ultimately be all that she needs and she may not require surgery. But last week she was out for a few days while she was getting those tests and I'm sure there will be several weeks months that will have days that she's not able to come in. I ask your kind indulgence through that difficult time, and if it becomes several days that she's not able, I may be asking for volunteers to come in and answer phones and help with a few things around the office. But the most important thing that I ask of you is that you do what you do best as the church. Be kind, be thoughtful, keep her in your prayers, and let her know how much we want to see her restored to full, fullness of health again. The other important announcement that I remind you about today is again that we are so incredibly blessed to have Leroy and Grace McMurtry celebrating their 68th wedding anniversary. If, if I hadn't gone so long today, I probably would ask for the remote mic so that I could ask them both to give us advice. What's the, what's the secret to all those years together? But I'm getting the signed. <laughs> I think she gave that sign to him sometimes, too. <laughs> Am I right? No, she's shaking her head. But we celebrate with them. I was trying to do the quick calculation in my head, and if Elaine and I are to celebrate our 68th wed wedding anniversary, I think I'll be about 108 years old or something like that <laughs> because I got so late start, but she'll still be under 100. So... <laughs> You'll be 100. There you go. <laughs> wow. What will you play for that event? Because <laughs> you'll be 100 too. <laughs> Whew. That's a lot to think about. A very happy Father's Day to everyone. Um, we, we are very blessed, and we thank you for your generosity in providing the ice cream for us today, Julie. Or maybe you got one and you want another. Okay. How wonderful. I, I think Donnie Harding wants the orange pineapple, or do you want the black raspberry? <laughs> Are there any other? Do you have? Yes? Something like that, in the parish house. It's been wonderful to see all of you today, to have you be a part of our worship. A very happy Father's Day to all you gentlemen. 
Um, I pray that you get the time that you need because you know, it's interesting, Mother's Day is all about mother gathering her brood around her like a good little mother chicken. Father's Day is more like the rooster trying to find some peace and get away from the hens. But, <laughs> but I, but I, and, and I didn't realize, and I didn't even realize that until I was listening to old time radio shows this week about Father's Day. And even on Father Knows Best, he wanted to go fishing on Father's Day <laughs> and not have a picnic with his family. I hope you have a picnic with your family. I hope you share some special time and enjoy them while you have them. Are there anything, is there anything else to share? If not, please bow your heads and receive this blessing. May the Lord our God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious and merciful to you. May the Lord look upon you, upon you with his favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is a nice old Baptist hymn, and boy, is it true. Wonderful peace. <laughs>